We need to make sure that we're constantly nipping at them to let them know that we're here for them. And if they have a if they have a need when it comes to selling or buying real estate, we're there for them. All right, welcome, welcome to another episode of Mindset Mastery. I'm your host, AZ Araujo, and I want to thank you for joining me today. Go ahead and check in if you're here with me. I have something great to talk about. I have an analogy that I was just thinking about that uh, is really going to put this market into perspective, is going to put it into the kind of mindset and the kind of skill set we're going to need to excel at a high level. Okay, we're going to have to excel at a high level, and it's going to require, again, that mindset to shift. Now, my job here, the way I see it, the responsibility that I have is to say something that will compel you, okay? To say something that will compel you to take action. To say something that will compel you to change your mindset, to change your behaviors, to go out and do the things that maybe you've been sitting on. That's my whole strategy behind Mindset Mastery. And I hope that you can just sit back and, and really just analyze what I'm saying and be able to allow your own experiences to kind of penetrate what I'm saying so that you can take those actions. Um, there's a lot at stake here. And the longer it takes for you to, to change behaviors, the longer it takes for you to take action, you're going to leave a lot on the table. And when you leave things on the table, it decreases your certainty, your confidence, and it's hard to get back up. So today I'm going to talk about uh, you know, an analogy I've just been thinking about here uh, over the weekend. And uh, I think it's going to make a lot of sense. You know, the, the past two, three years, uh, especially after the COVID, um, you know, scare, the real estate market has just been on an upward cycle. It's been insane. It's just been compounding on itself. And of course, we all knew that these numbers weren't sustainable long term. They just can't. I mean, most people are going to get priced out. And that's what's happened here in the Phoenix market. And uh, there was this, this downward pressure, right? And, um, and a lot of people, actually, it was an upward pressure that uh, put upward pressure on price. But there was downward pressure on inventory. And um, we had to deal with it. We had to deal with the, the market. We had to adjust to the market. We had to be very clever when it came to presenting offers. And on the listing side, well, just consider yourself lucky, right? If you had a listing during that time, consider yourself lucky. I mean, there wasn't much skill that was required to sell the home. In fact, many homes sold within hours, multiple offers. And I, you know, the, the funny thing about that is I would still see individuals order signs to put up on the, on the property, right? And it was just one of those things that we just got so used to doing that uh, it wasn't really necessary. Um, and one, I mean, there's some benefits. Maybe we'll get some calls from there. But at that time, many agents became very uh, closed off to even getting more buyers because it was just so difficult. They were so difficult because the demand was so high. And because of the upward pressure of, of price points, there was a downward pressure of your commissions. And I heard that a lot. I heard about the complaints on commissions. I heard about the complaints about how you know, the, the, the uh, percentages were very low. There were some new home builders and we all remember them, right? We all remember them that just stopped offering commissions altogether because they said, we don't need you. There's not really much skill, the demand, the market will do its job and we don't need you. And the realities are that, you know, the lower commissions really equated to the skill set needed, right? Required because um, there wasn't much needed. Uh, so the sellers decided to, you know, hold back on, on paying a higher commission to the listing agent and the listing agent just decided to pay a lower commission to the buyer's agent. I mean, there's not a lot of skill set required. It's going to sell. The demand is so high. And now um, it, it's, a, it's a flip side to that, right? As you can see on the MLS, as you can see on your end, uh, the commission percentages are up. As a matter of fact, you go looking around at new home builds, they're offering much greater commissions than they ever have before, even above the norm in this market, which is usually two and a half to three percent. And now you're seeing four, four and a half percent with incentives, right? They, they're catering. Now I'm starting to have like emails from new home builders saying, hey, can we go talk to your agents? I'm like, no, <laughs> hell no, right? Um, but that's what we have to understand that, you know, right now it's a little bit tougher. And, you know, the, the, 
the things have dried up a bit, right? When it comes to the demand. And with that, an oversupply is going to put a downward pressure now on, on, on prices, which is, this is just the beginning stages of that. But on the flip side, we have an upward pressure of commissions because it's going to acquire a greater skill set, right? You're going to learn how to communicate better, how to be more effective with negotiating. Listing agents have to do a better job marketing. That sign now has to be uh, in, in conjunction with uh, Facebook ads, with, with making sure they're following up with all their um, past clients. It's going to require uh, putting some money behind photography and video and all these other things, right? It's going to require greater skill sets. But I want to go ahead and compare the market to how I saw it the last few years. And um, it was like lion season. And now let me explain, okay? I'm going to do a lion versus wolf scenario here. And if you've been here long enough, I did a lion, uh, I did a bear wolf versus a wolf scenario many, many years ago. And right now, it's, it, it was uh, for many years, it was a lion season. Now, okay, I'm going to try to explain this as much as it makes sense in my brain. In my brain, it makes total sense. But sometimes when I have to explain, I was like, what the hell was I talking about? So I hope that you're able to follow me along with this, okay? So the lion season, everything was fruitful, right? And, and one thing that you have to consider about uh, lions is that they excel in their hunts. I mean, they're powerful, powerful cats that rely on sneaking up on prey and rely on getting really close to prey, right? So they rely on bushes and tall grasses. They rely on all these things to get really close and then they go hard. They, they attack with vigor, with, with, um, you know, with all their strength, and they're able to um, you know, catch their prey. And, um, and that's what it was. This market was full of just jungle. It was, it was full of bushes and trees. So anybody felt like a lion, really, right? Because it was real easy to go in with, with this short-term stamina. Because that's one thing about lions. They, they have a short-term stamina. So they have to get really, really close uh, uh, to their prey. Uh, I mean, as far as like, you know, to make sure that they're able to ensure their next meal. So they hide from dropping from trees or, or ambushing from tall grasses. They're fast and they rush quickly and they feel then and they're powerful, right? But their stamina is short-lived. And during this time, many agents, and maybe it's something that you did, right? It didn't require you to, to think about long-term. It didn't require you to Think about stamina. It was just short burst, and many were successful. Many agents that weren't producing at this level, all of a sudden are, are <coughs> excuse me, are producing high numbers. And it's because it was short term. The stamina was short term, and and they got plenty. Their bellies were full, and you know they just had to be in the right place at the right time. Uh, conversations had to lean over with listings and they got the listing is it made them feel like they had these skill sets not to say that a lion doesn't I mean they're they're the best hunters out there right but now we've turned into wolf season if you, if you understand how wolf wolves hunt uh, it's usually very long and they can chase their prey for miles and miles in the snow in the desert like it doesn't matter right they go for hours in fact and <clears throat> they don't care to be spotted. Unlike the uh, lions, you know, they, they'll, they'll, get, they'll ambush their prey. Like wolves showcase themselves to their prey. They're, they're like, you know, prancing up and down, you know, just making themselves known. And guess what? You have to get yourself known in order to bring home the buffalo, right? You have to make yourself known. And in fact, what they do is they just, they just circle around these herds and, and all the, the herds can do is just keep their eye on, on, the, on the wolves. It, they'll eat, keep their eye on them, and the wolves are up and down. They know, hey, we're, we're just going to make, them a little, uh, make ourselves a little known so that when I do go to present my product, when I do go for the chase, right, and I'm going to try to correlate this to sales, when I do go for the chase, uh, they know who I am, right? So they want to be seen. And once they start to chase, uh, one thing about wolves is that they're not powerful enough. They're just really, really skilled when it comes to just the long-term stamina, knowing that this is not the short game. So their strategy has to be a little different. What they do is, is they nip at these, at these, um, 
at their prey. Like I was watching a video, literally watching a video of them taking down a huge buffalo. And they were just nipping at the buffalo's hill. And, and this thing is probably 10 times the size of a normal wolf, right? But this thing was just nipping at its hill, nip, nipping at its hill, at its leg. And, and it doesn't seem like there's much damage being done. And what ends up happening over time as, as the, as the uh, prey starts exhausting itself is uh, it gets enough injuries and, and it typically what they do, I don't know if you've probably seen this, but they, they turn around and try to attack these dogs, right? These wolves. But it, it's not because they, they gain this bravery. It's because, well, their system is shutting down. They're going into shock. And little by little, these wolves are just picking at it, picking at it, picking at it to a point where they bring down the entire buffalo. And what I'm saying here, if I want to correlate this to, to business, of course, we're not going out for the hunt. We're not going out for the kill when it comes to, you know, getting our clients to use us. What we need to do is to make sure that we're visible. We need to make sure that we're constantly nipping at them to let them know that we're here for them. And if they have a, if they have a need when it comes to selling or buying real estate, we're there for them. We could take down that buffalo, right? But it's no longer the, the, the time frame or no longer the season where we can kind of play in the shadows and hopefully get lucky, right? Or we just drop down on our, on our prey and, and, and go short, short distances. This is a long game. And if you don't understand that your listings are going to require more listings because it's going to last longer, then all you're going to do is exhaust yourself from the frustration, not realizing that this is just a, a long game. It's going to require more skill set. It's going to require you answering your phone and not necessarily assuming that it's a telemarketer. You must answer your phone because that phone call could be your next transaction, could be the next buyer for your listing. So the strategy has to change. Back then, you, you could just assume and say, oh, this is a telemarketer. I don't need, I don't need to answer this thing. It's going to sell either way. As a matter of fact, I'm the listing agent. I don't have to respond to these agents. It's going to sell either way. I see all these text messages of these poor buyer's agents trying to get my attention. You know what? Forget these guys. It's going to sell either way. I have all this skill set. I have the listing. I'm going to offer them as little as possible, and they're still going to beg me for my attention. I'm just going to sit back and toot my own horn. Not anymore. All of a sudden, you're seeing a strategy, right? A, a, a change in strategy. Now, for those of you that work with buyers, you're in a great situation. You have negotiating power now. All of a sudden, the listing agent's calling you. What can I do? What can we, what, what can we do to put this together? And that's great. Right? That's great. But what I'm saying now is that we have to make sure that we're in constant we're in constant view of our clients on both the listing side and the buyer side. There's a lot of misinformation out there about where the economy is going, how it's going to, you know, how it's going to go down and, and these 5% interest rates. It's like, oh, oh my God, 5%. It's like 5%. It's only 5%, 5 5.5%. Do you realize even if the interest rate goes up to 10%, there's still going to be people that buy there's still going to be people that sell. Do you realize after all this, you know, madness on, on, on TV, the market's only dipped as far as, as uh, overall sales year over year, about 8 to 10%. But people make it seem like it's 90%. But these are the same people that thought they were lions during the last two, three years. Wolves know this is about the long game. Wolves know that it's only a matter of time. Everyone's freaking out because it's not instant. It didn't sell in a couple hours. Oh, my God, the market is dying. The sky is falling. No, it's going to take two weeks. Don't get into this mindset. During the season, you got to be a wolf, which means you got to nip. Those nips are marketing strategy. Those nips are tactics. You just can't go for the kill. There's not enough tall grass. The trees are bare. You're being seen. During this time, lions don't have the stamina. So-called lions. Our mindset has to be 
the wolf. Little by little every day. So if you decide not to market, you could have got away with it. Right? When the, when the uh, environment was full of brush and bushes and healthy green trees, I don't have to market. People just call me. Good. Okay, you got away with it. Try doing that now. It won't work. And I'm imploring you, you, you got you to be able to make sure that whatever's required is being done. And listen, this past two, three years gave a false sense of accomplishment of a lot of individuals that thought they were lions. They're going to be exposed. Individuals that thought they didn't have to work on their marketing or their videos, they're going to be exposed. Those that thought that what was working then was going to continue to work now, they will be exposed. A real player... A real wolf, the stamina, will continue to go. They're the ones who built their skill set during that time. It would have been real easy for many to put their feet up and say, I'm, I'm the king of the castle. Look at my throne. And many did. The real players just kept learning their skill sets. Real players continue to push the envelope. How can they get better with marketing? How could they get better with communication and emails, copywriting? Because they know at some point it dries up. But many forgot. Instead, they're afraid. They're freaked out. Kind of like the buffalo surrounded by wolves, right? They're not being attacked, but they're freaked out. They can't even eat right. They're constantly on edge. What you have to do is make sure that you're seen. Listen, right now it's about the consistency. It's always been about consistency, but now more than ever. And if you can't increase or increase, not, not only just increase the, the overall value you offer your market, but go deeper and learn something greater, it's only a matter of time before you're that starving lion. So listen, guys, like this is the best time for those that, that continue to show up, that did things during this time to improve themselves. Like you're going to, you're going to see something great here over the next couple of years. Like this is called a traditional market. This is where you really need skill sets. So commit, commit to improving yourselves on a daily basis. How can you get your marketing and your videos a little better so they can last long term? How can you continue to nip by your clients' heels through your marketing, through your text follow-up, through your emails once a week? Like all these things is how you start bringing home the buffalo. You just can't attack from the bushes one time. It's going to require you to be more consistent than ever. So if you're afraid of that, you may see your way out of this, out of this industry, which is the unfortunate part. I'm built to last. I show up whether things are good or whether things are rolling downhill. I'm going to be there doing the same things over and over and over again. And right now, there's no time to be afraid for the real players, right? You know, the next few months will be plentiful. But it will expose the fakers, those that got lucky, the part-timers. So going with that conviction, this is the long term. Go in with that, and you'll thrive exponentially. Guys, I hope that made sense. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Mindset Mastery, and I will talk to you soon. Bye now. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Badass Agents Podcast. Brought to you by AZ and Associates and Do The Work Coaching and Consulting. You can watch this and other episodes by subscribing to our channel on YouTube or by visiting us directly at badassagents.com. And of course, you can listen to this episode and many others on your preferred podcast provider.